Uh, well, my name is Michael Cope, and I'm the CEO of SENS Research Foundation. Um, I've been interested in the field that SENS Research Foundation is in for about 10 to 15 years. Uh, I became interested in this initially because, um, well, I was blessed with a wife who was gainfully employed, and after I, I was doing business development in vaccines in the Bay Area, and I started to get interested in challenges that the medical industry were not, um, were not, were not solving, one of which was the delivery of vaccines into the developing world. Another one was age-related disease. Um, I realized then that uh, of all the age-related diseases and conditions that are out there and all the work and money that we've poured into trying to treat them and manage them, we haven't solved any of them. And as a matter of fact, we haven't reduced the social or economic burden of any of them. As a matter of fact, it's going exactly the opposite way. You know, um, you know the vaccine story of the 20th century, the great story of infectious diseases and how we were able to develop a new approach to infectious diseases. And we've actually conquered many of them. And, and a lot of the remaining challenges are how do we get the right treatments into the right places rather than how can we address this, this, this disease itself. HIV is a notable exception, but even that one is starting to fall to the scientific research that's being done on it. Uh, on the other hand, as we've gotten more and more successful at treating these diseases, these, disease, these infectious diseases, that what's left are these, what we call, these conditions that we call the diseases of aging. And these are different kinds of diseases. Aging is a risk factor for disease, but it's a risk factor for disease in a different way than crossing the street is a risk factor for getting hit by a bus. You can vaccinate yourself against an infectious disease. But an age-related disease is really, at its core, just a collection of the normal damage that's occurring as we're alive that eventually results in some kind of pathology. So we solve infectious diseases, or we get closer and closer to solving it with vaccine and treatment approaches. And what we leave behind is a chase of pathologies that become more and more complex, and that when you wait for the pathologies to develop, are, it's almost futile to try to attack them at that range. And, you know, people talk about the silver tsunami. And, um, you know, they're often talking about retirement, income portfolios, things like that. But the other half of that is the rising costs of, in terms of GDP, on treating age-related diseases. And the reason why we have this crisis coming is because we are getting really, really good at keeping people alive for a long time, sicker and sicker, rather than keeping people alive and healthy for a long time. So um, some of the faculty who are, who are on stage at our Undoing Aging conference right now would say that we, we provide sick care rather than health care. Uh, we wait till people have developed these pathologies and then we see if we can chase them. And so what we're facing is a a situation where we have uh, a social problem and an economic problem, and these they're they're tied together intimately. It, the great example would be my grandmother. My grandmother Helen uh, died at age 96. She died three years ago of Alzheimer's disease. Um, my grandmother was uh, when she was 16 or 17 years old. She had tuberculosis, and they told her she had six months to live. She conquered that and lived through all those decades. But then in the last three years of her life, she was in hospice with, with dementia, and she became increasingly less aware of her surroundings. And, we, she, and her care was increasingly more expensive, and she was increasingly more distressed, and her daughters were increasingly more distressed because she thought that they were never visiting her. They would, my mom would see her every day, and, um, and she thought she was in jail. And every time we would go to see her, she would ask us to break her out of jail. She was heartbroken. My mother and my aunt were heartbroken. And our family finances were being poured into this hole that we knew there was no escaping from. The, the only result was going to be her death. And yet it was just going to be incredibly financially burdensome to get there. And when I say there's a social and economic crisis that's happening simultaneously, what I mean is not just 
people are getting older and an increasing amount of GDP is being spent on health care for the elderly. That's occurring. But the real personal impact is that families are being torn apart financially and socially because of this. We're becoming great at keeping people alive and sick, and it's a horrible way to go. Uh, the, the United Kingdom uh, was the... Uh, a few years ago, when David Cameron was the president of the G8, the United, the United Kingdom decided it would have a summit on dementia, and they hired this big report. I think it was a McKinsey report. And the report basically said, congratulations, developed world. You become so good at conquering infectious diseases that now everybody gets to die of the one thing nobody wants to die of, losing their mind and losing contact with their family. And it's the most expensive way to go as well.